Good morning. Happy Easter again. He is risen. He is risen indeed. I uh, have been thinking a lot all week about uh, that wonderful Christmas cartoon special, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, or How the Grinch Stole Christmas is the book it's based on. And I've been thinking a lot about that, you know, close to the end scene where the Grinch has stolen everything from them. And Christmas morning comes and he's sitting there gleefully watching and waiting, expecting the, the Who's down in Whoville to, uh, to be just gutted that Christmas hadn't come. And of course the Who's down in Whoville come out of their houses and they sing and they welcome Christmas, Christmas Day. And the Grinch has just blown away that it came anyway. And that's how I feel about this Easter. This virus has stolen much from us. It will steal more before we are through this storm. But Easter came anyway. The church may be empty today, but so is the tomb. He is risen. He is risen indeed. I read a, a meme this week that said, uh, you know, the disciples were all terrified and hiding in their houses that first Easter. We're just being extra biblical this year. And these are the kinds of thoughts that I found really helpful as I've traveled through this strange Holy Week. Things aren't as we would have hoped. They aren't as we expected them to be. And yet, here we are, on Easter, still able to celebrate. So I want to talk a little bit about the fact that, you know, ministers have their down times too. I think sometimes lay people think that ministers never have a moment of doubt, that faith always comes easily to us, that we just love everything we do and love everyone we meet, and it's just all so easy. That's not the case. We have our down days, we have our seasons of doubt, we have our moments when we despair. Sometimes ministry comes to us very hard, sometimes faith comes to us very hard. But God is good and he has this way, and every time I've experienced that, God has had this way of providing people to encourage me. In my experience, often these are lay people not ordained, not trained theologians, and yet they speak some of the most vital and deep theology into my life. And on the day that Grace View's session made the wise and necessary decision to further suspend worship throughout April, I was having one of those days when I was, I was grieving, I was in despair, I was pouring out my grief over not having Holy Week be what I had expected it to be, what I had hoped it to be, not being able to gather with my people. And in the midst of that, I, I was in a conversation with a friend over text and just really feeling down and pouring out my grief to him. And I was expressing how much it hurt that this would be the first Easter that I didn't celebrate with my congregation, wherever I have been on any other Easter. I have been with my people. So it's hard not to be with my people. And he reminded me that, that Easter would come anyway, and that what people really needed was encouragement about how to Easter at home. And so that is my goal today, to give you uh, the freedom and the energy and the encouragement to Easter at home. Do it however you want to do it. Uh, you know, I'm wearing my, my blingy headband with my um, resurrection butterfly on it just for the fact that I wanted to do some Eastery things this morning. You've already seen what I uh, accomplished uh, before I came home to record this video. I spent all of Saturday doing arts and crafts and just having a really good time with it. I, you know, whatever you do, 
if it's a Zoom Easter with your family, or if you just watch some church services, or maybe your favorite Easter movie, um, whatever you do, you can celebrate Easter in the comfort of your own home. And it, how lovely that somebody who uh, who isn't uh, a church leader said that to me. And then and then he gave me this amazing illustration. He said um, he said there's something about the Easter egg, you know that traditional Easter egg. He's like I'm not sure how to put this all together, but I'm thinking that our houses are like the shell of the egg right now. And he just wasn't sure where to take it from there but my eyes went about four feet wide and I went oh my goodness yeah the house is the shell and everything vital is within that shell the means of life are within that shell we are incubating as we stay at home as much as humanly possible as we weather this storm we are incubating we are being given the time to become more than protein and, and fat, more than, uh, than just those building blocks to become actual life. And, you know, that's what happens with the egg, right? It incubates and given the right circumstances and the things it needs to incubate and given time, it becomes a new life. And so I just had this thought of the fact that as we are sheltering at home with what is vital, our, our food and our family and um, immediate family only, for me it's me and my dog uh, and Netflix and Disney Plus and, uh, you know, texting with friends and Zooming with friends, we have what we need. And especially I, I think the challenge for us, especially as followers of Jesus, is how will we emerge from this? What will we come out of this with? And I hope that we will come out of this more patient, more generous, more loving, more kind, more hopeful, more resilient. That we will think a lot more about others and a little less of ourselves. My friend ended that conversation with this thought. He said, if ever there was a time for a closer walk with Jesus, I don't know what it is. And I, I just... My final thought to him was, I think you just wrote my Easter sermon for me. And indeed, here we are. And there it is. And what a gift that in the midst of a day that felt like I had lost so much, to also be given so much by a friend. I've provided for you a number of different resources, and I hope you will use some of those things. I hope maybe you'll take a page from my book and paint some rocks and go scatter them around your neighborhood or or make a tearaway poster of your own. I saw one in my... The, the whole reason I came up with that idea was that I was out for a walk with Koski, and I, came, I went past a, a light post, and there was a piece of paper attached to it, and it said... Take a smile if you need one. And there were all those little tabs along the bottom. And on each little tab, somebody had written, uh, drawn a happy face. What a simple thing. And I can tell you, I just smiled the rest of that walk. Um, I came up with the rocks because, again, I was on a walk with Koski. And somebody had painted some rocks and put them in there. They had a front garden that was right at the edge of the sidewalk of their property. And it had little bushes and little spaces between the bushes. And in the spaces between each of the bushes was a little collection of rocks uh, that said things like, you rock, because <laughs> a good pun is always a good pun. And, uh, you know, physical distance and thank you. And you're stronger than you think you are. 
And again, it, it I, I've had days where I'm really down for the whole day. I've also had days where I just, you know, I go through a bad hour or two. And this was one of those days when I was going through a bad hour or two. And so I just uh, decided, you know what, get out of the house, go for a walk with your dog. It'll do you good. And then I come across these rocks that just have these beautiful little messages and, and bright images on them. You can do something in the midst of this. You can make a difference with just the simplest little things, some rocks and some paint or some paper and a pen. Who among us doesn't have that in our house? So I want to leave you with this final thought. This is uh, um, from our reading today. Of course, my phone is going to be a problem because it's been doing this all morning to me. Give me a second. Get back to the NIV. There we go. I want to read to you uh, Matthew 28, and I'm going to start at verse 5. The women are at the tomb, and then verse 5 says, The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go and quickly tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into the Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Afraid yet filled with joy. Do you hear that mix of emotion thing that we've been talking about this, this uh, Holy Week, that there are embedded in the scriptures, embedded in that first Easter, this range of emotions and mix of emotions and things jumbled up together. And they are afraid, but they are filled with joy. And what does that make them do? That makes them run to tell the story. Friends, you can tell the story in your own way. Some people have been putting um, Easter eggs on their windows so that kids who are out for a walk can do a, a virtual Easter egg hunt. I did some sidewalk chalk this morning. If you have sidewalk chalk, do it. Just do it randomly in the middle of the week. Just, you know, right on the sidewalk that you're praying for people. I think people need that right now. Uh, Bless people with what you write. Encourage them because we all need that. And know that as you do those things, you're celebrating Easter. You are celebrating our Lord who is risen, risen indeed. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday. And I'll see you soon. Amen.